My name is Whitney Miller, and um, I've been going to Eagle Now now, gosh, I think eight years. And um, I attend with my husband, Victor, and my children used to attend before they went off to college, Victor and Margo. There was a time where I wasn't comfortable with prayer either, and I actually kind of thought it was the, the domain of like blue-haired old ladies who couldn't actually do anything to help. And so once, you know, if you can't do any, actually do anything about a problem, then you pray about it. Um, but I would say now, having been involved in prayer for a number of years, that um, it's for everyone. It's, it's a really important part of our life as Christians. It's something that everyone can be involved in. It doesn't take any special training or qualifications. You don't have to do it any particular way. Um, it's just a conversation, you talking to God. And um, as you develop the habit, it's also God talking to you and helping to you to know how to pray and you under coming to understand better what he's doing in a particular situation. Charles Spurgeon once said that prayer is the powerhouse of the church. He was one of the most famous preachers there was and he contended that there would be no ministry in his church if it weren't for the fact that people in his church were praying around the clock. And um, John Wesley also said that God does nothing except in response to believing prayer. So like the way, as we see God move in the world, we have to know that in a large part, he's doing what he's doing because of prayer. I always feel incredibly blessed after praying for someone else, me personally, not just because it's helped them or it's made them feel better, but I feel like I've had a meal with God. Fasting, I know a lot of people are afraid of fasting or they don't understand it. And I think it's something that we don't do a lot in this day and age. But fasting, in my understanding and in my experience, is something that really focuses you during a time of committed prayer for a particular issue. And there are two kinds of fasts. The first kind is a fast from creature comforts, maybe food or maybe sleep or something like that. And what that does for you is it keeps you from becoming complacent by taking away some of your comfort. The next kind of fasting broad category is fasting from um, maybe television or your iPhone or something that takes up your time, some activity that you normally do a lot. And what that does for you is it keeps you from being distracted. So both by keeping you from being complacent and by keeping you from being distracted, it like focuses your energy in the prayer process and causes you each time that you remember what it is you've given up for this period to devote yourself to prayer, it reminds you once again to go back to prayer with God. Yeah, there is nothing more important in the world than you could do than to pray for our youth. And I, I like to think of prayer and fasting and intercession in this way. Charles Spurgeon said that prayer is the engine. So imagine a car, prayer is the engine. Without the engine, the car doesn't go. And then fasting is like putting a fuel injection into that engine. So now you got a Formula One. And intercession when you're praying for other people is like then taking a trailer and hooking it to the back of your Formula One and taking everybody with you while you speed down the road. So pray for your kids. It changes things. It changes families. It changes you. And it will build up this church and bring revival like nothing else.